Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Peace and blessings from God our Father and the mighty Lord Jesus Christ. So, we back at it again. We are on fire. We are on a roll. Um, but don't get too comfortable because I'm not going to be posting like this all the time. So, um, you guys will hear from me here and there. Um, especially for the release of my new book, A Conscious Universe. Um, but as far as videos, because I have time, because I've been having time for, you know, this week, uh, I'll, you know, I'll release some videos for you guys. I'll, I'll publish some, some videos for you guys. But after this week, you know, I got a lot of things coming, so I'm going to be very busy. I'm a very busy man. I am a father and a husband, so... And I'm also in preparation for the United States Army. So that's another thing. So, But while I have the time, I want to be doing these little reaction videos for you guys. So today we're going to be reacting to Christian Totally Destroys Atheist in Public Debate. So I've seen a debate like this a long time ago, but it was only a piece of it. It was actually a shorts. Um, but this is like a three-minute video of that debate. So we're going to kind of get a little bit of context of uh, that short that I once seen a long time ago. You guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, but the the actual video is about two hours long. You guys could probably find this on YouTube. Um, I don't have the link. I mean, if I do, maybe I'll, I'll put it down in the description below. But we're going to be reacting to this video. It's a three-minute video, and it pretty much just simplifies the context and bundles it down to these main uh, points. And uh, we're gonna see this Christian go at it with this atheist. So, without further ado, let's uh let's watch the video. Where did God come from? Okay. I'm confused. Being philosophically consistent and being a very honest person, I'm sure you can tell me where God came from. Oh. <laughs> okay. So it looks like uh it's gonna get straight to the point of the Christian's response to this atheist's question. Um. Yeah. Where did God come from? Okay. So we're definitely far past that. We have already laid out arguments for this. Um, so I don't think atheists really try to use this argument as much anymore. They more so tend to fall back onto, I guess, the scientific evidence for God's existence. Um, and of course, trying to argue against the historicity of Jesus Christ and the evidence that we have scientifically um, for God's existence. So... But yeah, let's 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 hear what uh, our fellow brother in Christ has to say to this young atheist. And in, in addition, in addition, once you've told me where God comes from, uh, please try to clarify how you can figure that a spiritual force can have an impact on a material universe to create it. I think that some years ago we already talked about that kind of thing in uh, philosophical circles, at any rate, by posing the question. If angels are made of uh, spiritual matter and a pen is made of material matter and spiritual matter displaces no space, how many angels can dance on the tip of a pen? <laughs> I have a sense of sort of uh, uh, reversal experience here, but, but please do, go ahead. How many spiritual angels could dance on the tip of a material pen? This should be good. <laughs> oh, man. I want you to fill in the story of the rest of the uh, beginning of the universe. God, spiritual matter, impact on material matter. Okay, so two questions. All right. Your question, where did God come from, assumes that you're... I'm sorry. This is it. This is the shorts. So we got a little bit of context of the question that the atheist asked, which I didn't get before. I only seen the shorts. So yes, yes, man. He puts it together super good. Um, I'm going I'm to rewind a little bit. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to really give my two cents, but even though I'm already doing that. But man, this is such an amazing comeback. Um, it definitely has been... Read. Uh, how do I say say it? it it's been um, kind of redefined today. Um, the way that we get this argument, but the way that this man 
gave it was oh, it was so brilliant so brilliant so let's um let's hear him enough of me all right assumes that you're thinking of the wrong uh, obviously it displays that you're thinking of the wrong god because the god of the bible d is not affected by time space or matter if he's if he's affected by time space or matter he's not god time space and matter is what we call a continuum all of them have to come into existence at the same instant because if there were matter but no space where would you put it mm. if there were matter and space but no time when would you put it you cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. That's what I've been God saying. answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven, there's space, and the earth, there's matter. So you have time, space, matter created a trinity of trinities there. Just, you know, time is past, present, future. Space has length, width, height. Matter has solid, liquid, gas. You have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously. And the God who created them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who created this computer is not in the computer. He's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for and the, I, the concept that a, a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well, then I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that form by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think? Okay? So, wow, man. <laughs> your, your question, where did God come from, is assuming a limited God. And that's your problem. The God that I worship is not limited by time, space, or matter. If I could fit the infinite God in my three-pound brain, he would not be worth worshiping. That's for certain. So that's the God that I worship. Thank you. Wow, man. I don't remember it ever being that brilliant because I don't think I've seen that whole length. I think within the shorts, it was only about uh, 50 or 60 minutes that I've seen of it. But that, that was just, that was brilliant. Wow. He actually went in depth with uh, explaining this. Um and, and, and honestly, I, I still haven't seen anything that has been accurately able to refute these factors. And the fact that we haven't had any type of solid, plausible rebuttal to uh, these factors and, and, and these arguments is incredible to me. Um, and it's beyond me that we still have atheists out there that claim that they can disprove God's existence or argue against um, our evidence that we uh, propose um, it's just beyond me but um, I guess for the sake of this video because I don't want to make it too short we'll, uh, we're going to check out another uh, shorts of, um, of of a good uh, clip of a, of a debate um, a Christian versus atheist and uh, we're going to give our reaction to that as well so let's do it all right, so we're going to get a little bit of Frank Turek up in here. Um, we got Atheist Storms Out After Refusing to Give an Argument. I've seen this a while ago, but um, it's it's absolutely brilliant. The way that he expounds upon his argument, Frank Turek, and uh, the way he pretty much shuts down the atheist's argument with just a simple uh, example of uh, criminal investigation. So this, this is shouts out to you atheist out there. Who think that they don't have to give evidence um, against God or or evidence for why they believe that their position is true versus God? So uh, this is a shout out to you guys. Let's watch it. Uh, okay, I feel like this talk's kind of done have engendered a lot of confusion because there's a lot of things I noticed. And forgive me, I spoke out earlier. Um, That's all right. There's a lot of things that you did in this talk, in this presentation, you kind of gish galloped over a bunch of things, and there's a lot of logical fallacies. I don't want to address all of them, I can't. I know you've got a limited amount of time. The biggest problem I notice is you mentioned a few times, and kind of disparagingly, this idea of an atheistic worldview. Real quick, this gentleman seems like such a cool dude, man. He really seems like such a cool dude. Um, I don't know if he plays any cards, but I definitely, I enjoy Pokemon, so like, he definitely seems like a type of dude that I would love to sit down and play Pokemon with. 
he seems like a really genuinely cool guy. I mean, obviously he gets a little irritated um, uh, within this video, but he seems like like if you were friends with him or if you guys sat down and had a good conversation, civil dialogue, he seems like a really genuinely cool guy. So, man, I, I, I could only hope for the best of him. I hope he finds peace in Christ and um, I hope he ends up, you know, surrendering himself to Jesus. But let's uh let's watch the video. And then you attack that. That's a great straw man because atheism is not a world view. And I know that you've been made aware of this because you've had debates with other people to this effect. So I would uh be Okay, what do you mean by world view? Well, that's what I would like to ask you. Atheism is just the rejection of the claim of theism, which tells you nothing about how that person thinks about social rules, who they want to vote for, whether they like cake more than they like pie. It's not a worldview. Atheism is simply saying God is not guilty of existing. It's not I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to give my, my input. I know I'm not going to give too much of my two cents, but clearly this is what, you know, if you guys don't want my two cents and you guys are going to complain about it, then watch the videos by yourself individually. This is what my channel's here for, but um, I'll give a little bit of feedback and a little bit of critique, but as far as what he's saying, yes, athe atheism is a worldview. It's your view of the world and reality around you. It's your view of the world. You view that there's no God of the world. That's your worldview. That's what worldview is. It's your view of the world, of your surroundings. So this argumentation is not only self contradict it's actually contradicting. It's self-defeating. Why? Because his view of the world is that worldview is not a view of the world. He, he believes that uh, atheism is not a worldview, but that's his view on atheism. Uh, atheism is within the world, within the intellect of certain people who disbelieve the existence of God. His view on atheism is that atheism is not a worldview. So that completely contradicts his position. Um, I hope atheists, like a lot of atheists, don't take this position. But um, I, I actually have met atheists who believe that it's not a worldview. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's really, it's quite foolish. But it's not the same let's go. Let's watch. God does not exist. Now, there are atheists who do that. They're strong atheists or what we call Gnostic atheists. But atheism is just a rejection of the claim of God existing. Okay, let me ask you a question about this, Scott. Here's the proposition. God exists. Do you agree with that proposition? Do you disagree with that proposition? Or you don't know? I don't know. Okay, so you're an agnostic then. Well, agnosticism addresses knowledge, mm -hmm. right? So you don't know. Theism addresses a belief claim. So the, I would be agnostic atheist. I do not know that God does or does not exist, but I do not believe that he does. Okay, well... I'm sorry. So that's agnosticism. Atheists claim that there is no God period agnosticism doesn't know of of whether or not god exists so agnosticism is the question of whether or not god exists atheism is the rejection of god existing the moment an atheist begins to say well you know or, or begins to question whether or not does god actually exist you become agnostic that's why there are labels for for these uh specific positions theas Theism is the belief in a God, the absolute belief in a God. Atheism is the rejection of the belief in God. It's not that you know don't know whether or not it, um, a God exists. It's No, your claim is that he doesn't exist. It's not whether I know. It's you know that God does not exist. Agnosticism is I don't know whether or not God exists. Most of the time, atheists who, be, who believe or disbelieve rather – uh, the existence of God have other argumentations that they propose against God. Agnosticism, once again, it's I don't know whether God, I don't know whether or not God exists. So that's uh, agnosticism. The fact that people try to put them together, it, it, it's like it, it's pretty confusing. But uh, um, it also it's not consistent because if you don't know whether or not God exists, then you're not an atheist. You're agnostic. But if you are claiming that you know God does not exist and you have evidence or other things that you believe in that um, rejects God's existence, then, okay, you're an atheist. But let's go. You still believe that you don't know whether God exists, so it's still a belief. It's a lack of belief. No, you believe that it's true. 
that you don't know that God exists. And your point is? Okay, well, my point is, is that atheists today are trying to say, I have a lack of belief in God. For me, that's just saying something about your psychological state. It doesn't say anything about the real world out there. It doesn't say whether or not God exists. You're simply saying, I lack a belief in God. True. Well, this water bottle lacks a belief in God. But we water don't bottle doesn't have the capacity to believe. Right, I know. What you I'm address s- this with Cosmic Skeptic, like in 2017. When yeah, yeah. That, that, and okay, but the audience refused. doesn't know this, so just give me a chance you to answer. You guys should check okay. that out. Okay. It's pretty good. Um, if, if, we, if we define atheism as a lack of belief, in God or whatever, sure. then we're not really saying anything because everything that doesn't have the capacity to believe anything could be called an atheist then. And a water bottle could also be called a vegan if you say it's something that doesn't eat animal parts. As far as that label is being applied, it's ineffective in that case. I would say atheism is related only to those things that have the capacity to believe in the first okay. place. We can argue over definitions all day long. When I'm debating an atheist, whether it's Christopher Hitchens, Michael Shermer, Jeffrey Lauder, whoever it is, sure. When, when we set up a debate, I say, let's debate this. What better explains reality, theism or atheism? Or if you want to call atheism materialism, whatever you want to call it. But the point is, theism is not let's, trying to explain reality. Yes, we are. No, that's not what it is doing. And I'm telling you, as an atheist, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is, you are coming to me and you're saying, hey... God explains X, Y, and Z, and I'm saying, well, how do you know that, and why do you know that, and convince me of that. Okay, L- let me finish my point, Scott. Sure. Okay? When, when two people come to debate on this issue, I'm going to say, when I look at reality around me, when I look at the creation of the universe, or the fact that the universe exists, the fine-tuning, mm-hmm. the mo- objective moral values, when I look at uh, what appears to be design in life, and where life came from, when I look at consciousness and free will and the laws of logic and our ability to reason i think anybody coming to onto a debate stage has to give causes for why those things exist no let, they let only me, have to show that your arguments aren't correct yeah i don't he's not he's clearly not listening to frank turk's point when a debate is set up like like he was trying to explain the title what best explains reality that's the question so the theists have to answer that question. The atheists have to answer that question. Now, when they cross-examine each other, that's when the atheist can question the theist and the theist can question the atheist. But when it comes down to your explanation of what you believe in your position of the, of the theme of the debate, what best explains reality, you have to give an, you have to give an argument as to what best explains reality reality that's from the atheist and that's also from the theist so you know most of the time and this is a lot and you guys are going to see this through this channel I'm, I'm going to point this stuff out you guys are going to see and if you guys watch these debates on your own anyways that most of the time atheist they don't give necessarily arguments for their position they'll probably give a few pointers but they end up complaining about the theistic world they end up stealing from the theistic world they end up questioning the theistic world instead of spending their i think 10 to 15 or 20 minutes depending on you know the night of the debate between 10 and 20 minutes of their explanation of answering the theme question what best explains reality they use five minutes of that to explain their position and then the 15 minutes of that to question and complain about the theistic worldview while the theists theists they provide evidence they cover the whole 20 minutes and i've seen this consistently with uh atheists versus christian debates there was only one debate where i actually had so much respect for this atheist because he actually spent his time providing his uh, uh resources for why he believes atheism is true what brought him to that conclusion using his resources and his set of evidence that uh he decided to use to try to prove his position so like i said um the man is not really listening to what frank turk is saying um so he's getting confused as to frank turk's point and thinking that you know the basis of both positions is not to really prove their sides but to rather 
question each other's side. It's okay to question. It's okay to cross-examine. But the main point of the debates is to give arguments for your position, why you believe it's true. I've, I've even had art, uh, debates with atheists, and they've never given me evidence for you know, how the universe came to be, um, how the universe is so precisely um, designed, um, and, and, and how we have immaterial values in this world. You know, uh, they don't give evidence. Well, especially the atheists that I've um, had debates with as well. But when it comes to the theists, we are very confident with providing evidence. We, that is what we focus on. We don't care too much about, you know, questioning uh, or complaining about the atheist worldview. We're mo more so confident with the amounts of evidence and resources that we can propose and um, to show that God exists based off based on these evidences, um, scientifically, archaeologically, historically, so on and so forth. So, um, that's 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 just my point, and um. I just wanted to point out how this young gentleman is not really understanding Frank Turk's point. But let's uh let's continue the video. No, 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 no. What when you frame the debate the way we frame it, what better explains reality? And reality includes all those things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Then I th I I have the burden of proof to say I think these things are best explained by theists. And the atheist has the burden of proof to say, "Okay, I see those things exist." Here's my explanation for why they exist. Well, then I, I don't believe any atheist that I've ever seen debate with you has ever accepted a debate under that kind of framework. The framework is never that Scott atheism thing. is a better explanation. It's that your theism is not a sufficient well, explanation. Well, you'll have to talk to them, Scott, because they agree every time. Christopher Hitchens. Yeah, I should check out the videos Michael, on YouTube. Yes, That's Michael Shermer. No. Oh, okay, just, just, just so you know. <laughs> What, what 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 did you say, Scott? I was lying. Yeah, you say you were lying. Uh, I, I'll be happy to if you give me your email address, I will send you a video of all those debates, and you can watch. Okay, well, th those were the titles of the debates, um, and the reason we do that, ladies and gentlemen, is because the amount of patience Frank Turk has, easy man. To smell a rotten egg, it's hard to lay a better one. Okay, so. If someone has a position over there that I think is wrong, I can throw eggs at it and I can try and diffuse and say that's a bad argument, that's a bad argument. But I then still have the burden of proof to say, well, what is my explanation for the way things are the way they are? Let me give you one last illustration because it's an important point that Scott brought up. If uh, I'm a detective and atheist Michael Shermer is a detective and we come on a dead body and I say, okay, I'm looking at all the evidence here. I think candidate X did it. And Michael Shermer says, no, candidate X did it. Or didn't do it. That's, that's the wrong, that's the, that's, he's not the murderer. And I say, okay, who is the murderer then? And he says, well, I just lack a belief that your guy's the murderer. Is he a good detective? No. Shooting down my suspect isn't enough. If he's a good detective, he has to give reasons as to why candidate Y is the murderer. Not just to say that your guy is the wrong guy. That's all I'm saying, Scott. Yeah. Easily put him in his place. <laughs> but, okay. So, we're going to leave it at that. But, you clearly see he easily put, in, in it, put him in his place with that um, simple demonstration. But, yeah, like every debate, man, you know, I don't know what he was thinking or what he's watching because in all debates that I've seen, especially with the title, um, that is how debates are set up. Atheist, if you have nothing to bring to the table, then just asking questions, you're just showing that you're just, you're not really, how do I say it? You're not, you're not really putting anything forth to tear down uh, the fact that God exists. You're not telling us anything. You're just questioning our position. You're asking questions. You're, there's nothing wrong with asking questions, but I'm talking about in the position of if an atheist believes that God does not exist and he claims that God does not exist, then you, de then you need to give reasons as to why and how you came to that conclusion. 
You can't just say God doesn't exist, that's it. I mean, you can say that, but that makes you completely unreasonable. And it makes you an unreliable source to trust. Why, you may say? Because if you can't give me any resources or information or informative uh, uh, evidence that I can look to to say, wow, your position is convincing, then why should I trust you? If all you're telling me is that God doesn't exist, I don't need to propose anything. But if the theist, on the other hand, let's say that I'm a, a, a I'm an agnostic, I'm a skeptic, right? And then I ask the theist, what evidence do you have for God's existence? And then they provide me with scientific, uh, scientific evidence, um, uh, theological, you know, uh, uh, archaeological evidence, historical evidence for God's existence, right? Okay, they give me evidence. They don't question atheism. No, they just hear some evidence as to how God exists. And then I go to an atheist and they say, well, you know, they just, you know, their arguments for God is just really horrible. You know, I, I ask him, what are some evidence or what are some arguments that you can provide for me so that I can, too, understand your worldview and hopefully not get myself trapped in believing God? What evidence can you provide me that your worldview is true or your view of the world and what truly exists is really truly the way? Like the Big Bang or something like that. Like, give me some evidence. The atheist, 95%, I'm going to give them that 5% uh, five break, but 95% of the time, all they do is complain about the theistic arguments, the theist's pos uh, position. That's all they do. They complain about the Bible. They complain about, oh, well, you know, God, you know, you, you really think that some guy in the sky is just sitting up there, you know, watching this whole world. What about evil? You know, like why, why, why do we have so much evil in the world? You know, you look at look at that. How can God exist? Asking why evil does not disprove God. You know, and, and this is the problem with atheism. This is why atheism fails. This is why it fails. This is why it's it's absolutely not convincing. The only people you convince are the people who are lazy. That's the truth. Sloth people. Sloth. Okay? Those are the only people that you're convincing. Why? Because, well, those are some of the people that you're convincing. But most majority of the time, those are the people you're convincing. Because these people are not willing to look into the evidence. These people are not willing to dive deep. These people are not willing to dedicate themselves to trying to discover the absolute truth of reality. Of whether or not God exists. So... The most of the people that you have in your uh, belief system and your whole system and your whole construct are lazy people. People who are lazy. They just want to complain. They just want to sit back and, you know, toss their popcorn at the TV at a channel that they don't like rather than getting up and doing something about it. Right? But it's the world we live in, you know, um, which is why atheism is never going to convince me or convince anybody who has came come to the conclusion of knowing God um, God existing and ultimately people who have come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life and have given their life to Christ um, this is this is actually why a lot of atheists atheistic scholars um, atheistic scientists atheists atheistic astronomers and cosmetologists this is why they become christian this is why they end up becoming theist because through through years and years of study and evaluation and and observation and research and 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 really fighting hard to figure out what you know what the truth is and and, and what the real meaning meaning to reality is this is why they become theist because atheism fails and if you continue on in a humble, honest investigation of, of your search of the truth and of reality, then ultimately you're going to find yourself falling to the feet of God. But anyways, guys, I'm going to leave the video right here. I definitely made it longer than, uh, than probably I expected, but... 
But yeah, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you smack the like button. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.